up, it's the new Razer, the new Nexus, the new iPad, and a mobile home for your iPhone. It's time to watch before you buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by Stamps.com. Start using your time more effectively with Stamps.com. Use Stamps.com to buy and print real U.S. postage the instant you need it right from your desk to get our special offer. Go to Stamps.com now. Click the microphone and enter Before You Buy. And buy Shutterstock.com. With over 28 million high-quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 25% off your new account, go to Shutterstock.com and use the offer code before you buy 1113. Welcome to Before You Buy. The Twit Product Review Show, where we get the greatest, latest products in-house, and we got a bunch of them today, and uh, let our uh, Twit folks review them, unless I want to review them first, in which case, keep your hands off, buddy boys! That's why I've got <laughs> two reviews today. But we're going to start off with Sarah Lane. She claims this is a mobile home for her iPhone. Let's watch. Hey everybody, Sarah Lane here for Before You Buy. I'm sitting in my car because I have been tasked with checking out this little gadget here. It's called the Mobile Home. And as you can see, it kind of almost looks like a little iPod Nano or something. There's not much to it except a iPhone type button here on the front. The whole idea of the Mobile Home is to have a place besides your iPhone where you can engage Siri. Maybe you want to call your mom. Maybe you want to make an appointment for yourself. Maybe you want to do anything but not have your phone so handy that you end up putting yourself in danger because you have too much access to stuff that you shouldn't be using while you're driving. I've been guilty of this before. I've thought to myself, well, you know, I'll just, you know, I'll just engage Siri while I'm driving here. You know, I go ahead and hold that down. What's nice about my car is that my phone is set up to talk to my car's on-dash display via Bluetooth. With the mobile home, what I do is it kind of becomes a triangle. It's like a three-way connection. My phone talks to my car, but my phone also talks to the mobile home unit. So when I press this button, I engage Siri on my phone, which then ends up being played back through my car speakers. It's actually really, really easy to set up. You just make sure that your phone is connected via Bluetooth to your in-dash uh, system. Obviously, my car is gonna be a little bit different than your car if you have Bluetooth capabilities, but in general, they all work pretty similarly. And then I pair via Bluetooth the mobile home to my phone. That was all extremely easy to do. I had to pop out the battery, which is just a little battery in the back here, take off a little protective plastic strip, and then pop the battery back in. The only weird thing about it is, is that I've got uh, instructions that I looked at, and the instruction says when you, and I'll show you, when you pop out the battery and then pop it in, it should flash red, green, red, green to let you know that it's ready. Well, when I do that, it pretty clearly flashes yellow rather than green. Now, it's not a big problem. I went ahead and figured, oh, they meant green when they said yellow, but there doesn't seem to be any green color in here. So that's a tiny little weird thing, but in general, not a big deal. Okay, so how does it work? Is it safe? Is it awesome? I went ahead and put it up here. I'm using it almost like a little, you know, garage display. There we go. It says it'll be red green, but it's actually red yellow. Let's give it a go. Siri, tell me my notes for today. Here's your note. Your note from today says, Diction, Evans, Caballero, Edder. That's all I have. Siri, remind me to say happy birthday to my friend tomorrow. Here's your reminder for tomorrow at 9 a.m. It says, say happy birthday to my friend. Shall I create it? Yes.
Okay, I'll remind you. So this works like a charm. It was extremely easy to set up. I know you're wondering how much does it cost? If you go to drivewithsiri.com, which is the company's website, they have a suggested retail of $59. My initial reaction was 60 bucks for this thing, really? But I do have to say, it's nice and small. You can attach it to a variety of places. I went ahead and put it up here, but maybe I could have it over here and you know, my, you know, it's just a little, I don't know, put it wherever I want to put it. And you almost can't put a price on safety. And I really do think that this is a great, this is a great little gadget that keeps you uh, from needing to depend on your phone and putting yourself in an unsafe situation when you're driving. But it allows you to do hands-free stuff, which Siri is actually very, very good for. That's something that I want to have access to in my car. So in that sense, I think the mobile home is a really safe bet or a really nice gift for somebody that you know for a fact maybe needs a little bit extra help being a little bit safer when they're on the road, that sort of thing. So what I like about it is it's small, it's compact, very easy to set up, works well and keeps you safer. So I'm going to go ahead and call the mobile home a definite buy. It's small, it's easy to set up, and most importantly keeps you safe. That's all very important because we want you to live a really long time. For everybody at Before You Buy, I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Well, I got to say this $60 is less than the ticket you'd get in most states <laughs> from touching your phone and using Siri, but I don't understand exactly how this is different than pressing Siri's button. It, anyway, it, yeah, it's a remote. It's. I think it's really to get you off the hook, because you, you, you're not allowed to touch your phone, at least in California. You can reach up to the But you can reach visor. up and touch this on your visor, yeah. Uh, thank you, Sarah Lane. Sarah's the host, of course, of i5 for the iPhone, where she talks all about iPhone stuff like this, but also of iPad Today and of the Social Hour and of Tech News Today, our Monday through Friday daily news hour. Now it's time to uh, take a break and talk about stamps.com. When we come back, a brand new speaker system from Sonos snubs as a review. I'm really dying to find out about this because, as you know, I'm a Sonos fanatic. You one more thing I'm a fanatic about? Not going to the post office. These days, if you run a small business and you're sending employees to the post office to buy stamps, you're wasting your money. How much does that cost? You pay Even if you pay the employee minimum wage and you send them once or twice a month, we're talking $20, $30 a month for them to go to the post office, find parking buy the stamps, come back, have lunch on the way. Why don't you just print your own stamps? Not with a postage meter, but with your computer, your printer, and stamps.com. We've been telling you about stamps.com for some time. We've got a great four-week trial for you. In just a second, I'm going to tell you about it. Don't get that $80 one. i got a better one for you. But first, let me uh, re refer to Rick Billington. He's a, a broker, real estate broker. He owns his own real estate company. Heard us uh, talk about stamps.com. Now, if you're a realtor, you spend a lot of time mailing out mailers, brochures, that kind of thing. He used to take the envelopes uh, and packages to the post office. He also used scales that he'd purchased in an office supply store. They were out of date, so he'd have to always recalculate the price of the stamp because the post office keeps changing the price. It's a hassle and a waste of time and money. Rick says he likes stamps.com for the convenience, the accuracy of getting exactly the right postage every time, and he never runs out of postage when he needs it for the business. We love stamps.com here. We use it to print right on envelopes with the Twit logo, with the return address automatically filled in, as well as the address when you're sending to, uh, if you sell things on Amazon or eBay or PayPal, it automatically, Etsy, I don't, if you were an Etsy uh, seller and you didn't use stamps.com, you'd be nuts. Maybe you just don't sell anything, but if you, if you ship a package a day, it is so worth it to print it, you know, the label for the package. We've got a USB scale. You always know the right weight. Stamps.com will recommend the right class of mail. They even give you discounts, big discounts, up to 21% you can't get at the post office. You're going to save money. You're going to save time. You're going to love Stamps.com. So here's the come on. Go to the, go to the website, Stamps.com. No, wait, don't click the $80 thing. Click the microphone up there in the upper right-hand corner. There you go. Please enter before you buy to show your loyalty to this show. There you go. All one word, before you buy. And you will get, instead of an $80 bonus value, a $110 offer. It includes $55 in free postage. Now you're really going to save money. You can use it over the first few months of your Stamps.com account. We're going to send you that USB digital scale. You pay shipping and handling. It's about 5 bucks. So to make it up to you, Stamps.com will give you a $5 kit with you know, uh, blank uh, stamps and all that stuff so you can print right on there. And, of course, a month of Stamps.com for free. I want you to try I'm telling you, if you're a small business and you're not using Stamps.com, you're missing the boat. Please don't use the postage meter. Use Stamps.com. Stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, 
enter the offer code before you buy. You're going to love it. All right. Now, uh, speaking of things I love, I love Sonos. I have Sonos throughout the house. We saw Sarah Lane's review of Sonos a few uh, weeks ago on Before You Buy. It's a system that is wireless. It magically syncs up so you can have Sonos speakers in dozens of different rooms and somehow they're always in sync, which is not an easy thing to do. Try that with any other system. You'll find it's very difficult. But it has internet radio. It will play a music from your Android or iPhone. It's controllable by your Android, your iPhone, a variety of remote controls. They have a Play 5, which is a big speaker with five little speakers in it. They have a Play 3, which is a medium-sized speaker with three little speakers. And they just announced, along with the subwoofer and the sound bar, both of which we've reviewed all very positively, the Play 1. This is their least expensive speaker. Shannon Morse, our producer, has it. It's Dinsy Weenie. And the idea is it's, it's, it's like a starting point for Sonos, right? It is. It's the baby of the Sonos brand. And since you already did pretty much all of the review, I'm just going to give you my Well, point. I just wanted people to know what Sonos is. <laughs> the real question is, is this worthy of the Sonos name? Because the other speakers sound oh very my gosh. good. So this is the first time that I've personally tried a Sonos device. And I have to say that I was very impressed with it. Now, just from my experience, I use this at a party. I used it all wow. weekend. So it's pretty loud. Yeah, it's pretty loud. Now, I, I did get two of them to review. So I put one in my kitchen and I put one in my living room. That's and one I way to use it. You can together. also pair them and have stereo left, yes, right. Yes, you can. So you, you can do that. You can do that through the application. It's so super easy. In places where I want really good sound, like the bedroom, I have the left, right Sonos speakers. Yeah. And in places like the bathroom where I don't care. I have a single Sonos speaker. So you, so you can, can get that nice, thing. that yeah. nice surround. You know, when you're listening to Red Hot Chili Peppers and you got a guitar over <laughs> here and the vocals over here, you get that sound, and it's amazing. But if you want them in separate rooms, they're so easy to connect. It you is. just it's do great. everything through the application. So my first thought when I got these was, oh, this is going to be so hard to connect, and it's going to be hard to set up. These are so easy to set up. It's just like everything else in the Sonos atmosphere. Um, all of their different products you can connect all of them together just like these one of them has to be on the ethernet right yes so, so you can one of them needs to be one, near your router you can put a bridge with it which you get oh, okay. a bridge for free oh, you currently do? with one of these oh, good deal yeah yeah so i think bridges are usually like 60 dollars yeah, somewhere expensive. in that price range. so that's what you connect to your ethernet and that yeah. so that puts put that all the rest of them on the internet and when you do that, you click a little button on the top of it, and then you pair that with each of your speakers. So when you plug in your speaker to the power, it also starts lighting up on the top, and you just click the button at the top. So you see and that little light right there. It's their way of right signaling, there. sync up, please. And as soon as you click that, it connects to your wireless, and you choose to connect to it on your application, and you say which room it's in. And then you can group them as you like, if I want to have them separated or together or what have you. And what you said sounded more complicated than it is. Yeah, I it's know. It's really simple. <laughs> and did you use an iPhone or an Android phone? I used an iPhone for okay. everything, from yeah. the setup all the way to playing all the music they on have, my iPhone. They also have iPad software. They do. You get great album art. They have you know a desktop what you're application yes. that I played yes, with that's on right. my PC. Yep. The desktop lap application is great because it on automatically included all of my music library. So I was able to play everything through the speakers over my Ethernet connection. What's on, what's on the back of that? So the back of this just has two ports. It's really really clean it's a nice plastic finish but it looks very pretty there's a white one and a black one for the top and the bottom stripes this is just the Ethernet if so you, you could use that as a bridge in. as well as a speaker yes. if you decide to make that your base unit and the second one up here is just a mounter so you can mount it onto your wall or wherever you need now, to mount it I to. want to point out something because my son wanted a speaker for his uh, dorm room oh and he, I, he said send me a Sonos so I did and he said, but Dad, I can't use it as an aux speaker. Notice this doesn't have an aux jack it does not. in it. Some of the bigger Sonos's do, but they have to be configured no. No on aux. a network so <laughs> before you can use them as an aux uh, speaker. So poor <laughs> Henry, he's got a beautiful speaker, but he can't use it. Yeah. So that's something to keep in mind. This really is designed to use with a Sonos system. Yeah, it definitely is. So, um, and it needs Wi-Fi. When I was playing with just one of these, the sound quality was really great. Um, I noticed that the bass comes out really, really hardcore whenever I'm listening to rock and roll. When I'm listening to classical music, it's so clear. Okay, like You can hear the instruments in it. John, let's get some music. Oh, look, John's doing it. Yeah. Oh. I had John connect it. It was so easy. He yeah, just pressed easy. the button, and he connected mm, it to our little great. one. <laughs> and it's, it's loud. It sounds like almost like a full stereo system. It does. 
So you can tell there's an obvious difference from the really big Sonos speakers. The now you do have a volume control on the top, I do. but you can so also can do that in the down. software. I can there's pause also it a mute right button. Here. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. I can play it again if I want to. Yeah. But it, there's a different quality difference because this one is a smaller speaker. The specifics of it, it's mono drivers. It's a 3.5 inch woofer and one inch tweeter, class D amplifier amplifiers driven through DSP. It's Obviously, very good sound, actually. I'm surprised. It is. I was very curious, because I bought the big ones, the Play 5s. We have a Play 3 in the lobby. We have Sonos ah, here, too. Yes, yes, we do. But this is the first I've heard this one. It's surprisingly good. I'm not, I mean, I it guess I shouldn't be surprised. It sounds beautiful. Now, this is not cheap. It's 200 bucks. It's $200, Pricing. but honestly, after playing with these for the weekend, after using it at a house party that I had, the sound quality on this is so much better than the other Bluetooth-enabled speakers better than and whatnot a jam that you have available right now. Yeah. And it's so easy to da daisy-chain them or make them into stereo speakers that I'm kind of obsessed, and I put these on my wedding registry because I was like, I have to get Did did you really? Yeah. Oh, that is good. It's like, I have to get That's these. a definite rec. But before you tell us, <laughs> pros and cons. So my pros and cons, it's competitively priced at $200. It's definitely a good buy. Uh, great bass response for rock and roll mu music, if you're into that. And it's very easy to connect and set up as well. The cons on this, though, and they were kind of hard to choose from. It does require their proprietary application, either on your desktop or on your phone. So you can't connect straight through iTunes Music, for example. You have to go through their application. And also, it's not portable. But that's kind of a given, since it's a home theater device. It's not a, it's not a portable speaker device. Yeah. So that's kind of a given. You have to know that before you purchase it. But you have to be in a Wi-Fi uh, network. Yes. Even though you're plugging that in with Ethernet, it's the Wi-Fi is what you use the remotes with. Yes, Although that's right. the Sonos has a proprietary network. That's how they get mm -hmm. this music to sync so well together. It's doing it's it's not riding on no top of Wi-Fi. No problems with syncing either. No, it's no perfect. problems at all. And we, it you know, remember wonderful. on Know How, I as and I tried to set up uh, the, a similar system. And the issue, even within a small area of getting two speakers to be exactly the same, it's hard. It doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. So there's this like it's echoey thing that doesn't. It, <laughs> this one doesn't have that. You problem. can fill, and I've done this many times. Fill the whole house with one. <laughs> music thing and it's like a party yeah in fact we do that here late yeah, night that's true yeah. <laughs> so definitely not portable i mean it, the thing weighs like two pounds so you're not going to carry this in your backpack with you and it's no it's not bad it's a powered. class a amplifier right it, that's why it's yeah it's heavy it's amplifier. heavy yeah. yeah it's definitely but that's what heavy. you want so, so if it, i would give it a buy try or uh, don't buy i mean <laughs> since i probably didn't give it away already i i think i probably gave it a buy there's a step above buy <laughs> i'd put it on my wedding registry uh, that, this that's, is a, a wedding that's registry. a step above <laughs> that's, definitely. that's saying it's it's, it's so uh, nice. as I'm good so as sad silver i have to send these back i don't want to send yeah. it back I have spent so much it? money on Sonos. <laughs> I don't even want to think about it. I have it. a feeling I'm going to start too. <laughs> well, but that's the nice thing. You can start small with a $200 item and you slowly can. grow you through up. your house. Yeah. We have now um, a lot of the fives, which are like 499 the big bucks. Guys, They're expensive. Yeah. And then uh, we have the Sonos Play Bar. You know, with mm -hmm. that, for surround sound, it's interesting because you can buy the extra subwoofer, also yes, pricey. The woofer. But you can also use these speakers as surround speakers and mm -hmm. make it a whole surround system wirelessly very easily. It's really remarkable. It is pricey, but. Yeah, I mean, people it in the works. chat room keep saying, oh, it's expensive. There's other che there's cheaper speakers that sound as good. Nothing is good. But yeah, the, the big thing is the syncing. It's so yes. hard to get wireless yeah. speakers to sync yeah. across your house. And nobody else does it quite as good as Sonos. So three ninety nine. So it's not as bad as I thought it was for the Play Five. Two ninety nine for right. the Play Three. One ninety nine for the Play One. Um, even the One sounds surprisingly good. The Sub is a little overpriced. I think it's seven hundred bucks. Uh, the Play Bar seven hundred bucks. Those are tough to recommend just because of the cost. Right. Frankly, um, premium and, product. It's and a premium, it's a premium product. product. The Bridge. You need at least the Bridge. I put the connect, not the amp connect, because that's powered, but the regular connect in my stereo. And that means, so if you have a good home stereo system, you can mm -hmm. also get the benefit of being able to control it, making it part of the whole party room yeah. scene. And also, they've got internet radio, they've got Spotify, they've got Mog, a lot of services, Songza. Um, there are a few things missing. I wish I had better audible connectivity. Yes. It, it's not, it's wonky. Audible, uh, and I don't believe iTunes Radio is iTunes included Radio as well. is not on it, nor is Amazon. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think Amazon is, but it's never worked for me. So, and Google is not. So, if you know, if they put Google Play Music, I'd be happy. Anyway, 
Love it. I like it. I yeah. think it's a good choice. I was choice. very happy with Thank this. You, I was Shannon. very excited to review it. Shannon is, uh, of course, our producer. Produces Know How as well and is going to be on a new show with Padre soon. High five, dude. Programming 101 yeah. <laughs> with Padre and the Snubs. That sounds like a movie title. Pinky and the Brown. Padre and the Snubs. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, it's time to talk about something that has been hotly awaited, and actually, uh, uh, Google surprised us all by shipping early on Friday, uh, Hall actually it was Thursday, Halloween day, Google put the Nexus 5 on sale, their successor to the very popular Nexus 4. This is a line of phones starting with the Nexus 1, which was, in my opinion, the best one of the best Android phones I ever had. I loved my Nexus 1. They're made by Google, or made for Google by companies, in this case, LG for the Nexus 4 and 5. But Google doesn't allow any uh, junk from the manufacturer. And because they're sold at the Google Play Store, there's no carrier cruft on it either. It is a pure Google experience. Now, the original Nexus 1 was designed to bypass the carriers. Google learned their lesson. They realized they do need the carriers. So the newest Nexus, the Nexus 5, is available on everybody but Verizon. You can buy it from Sprint. You can buy it from T-Mobile and AT&T. I bought this from the Play Store. Here's the amazing thing on the uh, Nexus 5, the price. So this is a 32 gig uh, Nexus 5. Uh, they also sell 16 gigs. Unlocked, unsubsidized, 16 gig Nexus 5 is $350. For $400, you can get the uh, 32 gig. Now, you do make some sacrifices. No SD card, just like the Nexus 4, uh, and no removable battery. There's no serviceable parts inside. And uh, that's unfortunate. That's one of the things I like about Android phones, but not this one. Um, they've replaced the glass back. I have the, uh, the old Nexus 4. This was kind of interestingly stylish. It had a glass back and front, which also made it very fragile but kind of cool looking. Um, I, I have to be honest, I when I reviewed the Nexus 4, I gave it a do not buy because I thought the screen quality was low. It wasn't as good as many of the phones on the market, the top of the line Android phones. And I also, I confess, didn't fully appreciate the value of having a pure Google experience phone. I have learned my lesson. And a year later, I have to say, there's a lot uh, of good in the Nexus uh, 5. First of all, it's the first phone to have Android 4.4 KitKat. Uh, no other phones yet. Many will. KitKat has some interesting new features. This is the new Google Home screen. I've customized it a little bit, but this is the thing that's most important. One of the pages of the Home screen is now Google Now. Google Now is sewn into all of this. Also, a new photo app that's uh, a little confusing, frankly. There's still the Gallery app, but they also now have a Photos app on the Nexus 5 that really is just an interface to the Google Plus Photos, including their new Auto Awesome, their new video editing. There's a lot of new photo features in uh, in uh, Google Plus uh, that I really like. I have to say, uh, the quality of the camera is surprisingly good. Uh, look at that picture of the sidewalk. It's re no, that was a mistake, obviously. Um, it's really rich. Um, I think there's an HDR Plus mode that does a, a great job. Um, this is an 8 megapixel shooter, still maybe not as good as the iPhone, but I have to say Google's really making some real progress in the software side of this, particularly if you're a Google Plus user. Uh, I think you're going to really enjoy the quality of the camera on this. That's a first for a Nexus phone, frankly. They've always been a little second rate in the cameras. It's also a much improved screen over the Nexus 4. It's now full 1080p 5-inch screen. Uh, and I felt like it was a little washed out. I think my eyes are ruined by all of the Super AMOLED screens I've been looking at. Um, it's The thing that really works well is if you have to use this in bright sunlight, I've never seen a phone work so well. It's about this bright in bright sunlight. It is as good in bright sunlight as it is in the dark. There's a lot to be said for that. Uh, of course, you don't have to use the Google Launcher. Like every uh, Android phone, you can use your favorite launcher. I'm, I'm just showing you the original Google Launcher just so you can see what it looks like. Um, uh, you know, it's an impressive phone, and boy, uh, for 350 bucks, that you gotta say that's that's probably the best deal on an Android phone. When you buy Nexus, you're also buying the guarantee that Google will update these phones first. So when the next generation of Android comes out, it's certain that you will get it before anybody else does because it's a pure Google experience. Of course, you have full access to the Google Play Store. You'll get the latest version of the Play Store. It's a little bit changed. Uh, you'll get uh, now the uh, the menu is over here on the left. Uh, you'll get that Photos app. It's a very impressive phone. A couple of us have already got our Nexus 5. Chad loves his. He said it's the best phone 
he's ever used. Yeah, it's an IPS LCD screen. Uh, looks pretty good even at an angle. It feels a little bit low contrast, maybe a little washed out over bright to me. Um, in fact, one of the reasons I have a black, black wallpaper on that is to reduce that uh, feeling of kind of over bright. But maybe that's because I've been spoiled uh, by other, uh, other phones and other screens. Uh, compared to the Moto X, now I gotta say, in my opinion, the Moto X is still the best Android phone out there. It's very close to a pure Google experience, but Motorola, a Google company, has added features that are still not on the Nexus 5. Things like the Motorola Assist, which know when you're in a meeting or on driving a car or asleep and automatically silence the phone so that you don't have to worry about getting woken up in the middle of the night. They'll automatically send out text messages if you want while you're in meetings. Those kinds of things are really nice features. The shake to open. But this does have one thing uh, that the Moto X has. When the phone's unlocked, you can say, OK, Google, and the phone will respond. And <laughs> it just did. It just <laughs> did. And I think that's really a nice feature. The hands-free, no button to push. Um, the phone has to be unlocked for it to do that. This also lacks one feature that makes that really great on the Moto X, which is the skip feature that means when you're in a trusted Bluetooth area or you put it on a specially formulated NFC chip, uh, chip, it'll automatically unlock itself. You still have to unlock this manually or not lock your phone, which I, I don't recommend. Another a nice feature that I expect to be in more and more Motorola phones in time is the tap to pay. It's got NFC in the back. You can set it up with a variety of applications. Of course, Google hopes you'll use Google Wallet. It comes with Google Wallet. And if you go to a store that has the tap to pay feature, don't know where those would be, but one hopes more will uh, appear, you can literally just tap this. I think McDonald's does it a few places like this. You can tap at your phone and automatically pay with your Google Wallet or other application. So a beautifully designed phone. I think Google was smart to replace the plastic with this velvety soft touch uh, uh, they replaced the glass with the velvety soft touch uh, plastic. Much improved camera, much improved camera software. This photos, photosphere is bigger, better. The HDR Plus is excellent. When it ties into Google Plus and their camera capabilities, I think you get a pretty darn good uh, phone. Great video, wonderful video capabilities. The screen, gorgeous. Thank you for 1080p. That's a very high uh, resolution. Shannon played with it a little bit. She said she felt like it was a little soft focus. I'm not sure. You, you've probably seen the same thing I am, which is just... It, it, feels a little washed out maybe yeah, something that must like be that what it is. probably should uh, you know play with it beforehand so the pros hey the price is the easily the number one pro it is a great screen it is a pure google experience you don't get purer than this including the first phone to run android 4.4 kitkat uh, on the con side uh, no removable battery no sd card either 16 or 32 gigs that's all you get um and I do feel like the screen maybe lacks a little bit compared to the Super AMOLED screens from Samsung. Even the HTC One, which is also an LCD screen, I think looks better than this at uh, a very similar uh, screen resolution. Uh, nevertheless, this is a definite uh, buy. If you're a Nexus type, uh, this is going to make you very, very happy. Probably the best phone, phone uh, Google's ever done. The Nexus 5, the first KitKat bar in a telephone. And uh, that's my review of uh, the Nexus 5. Uh, I, I liked it a lot, uh, and I, I just think that there are other phones to look at, the HTC One, the Moto X. What's The good news is uh, Android phone folks have huge, uh, excellent choices nowadays, and this is just one more great phone. All right, coming up in just a little bit, Padre's got a very beautiful laptop he wants to review. If you're a gamer, you're going to want to stay tuned. Before we do that, though, let me talk about Shutterstock.com. 28 million, no, that's more than that now. I think it's over 30 million royalty-free yeah, stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and videos, many of them from professional photographers and artists. Every image is reviewed for content and quality before they add it to the library. They add more than 20,000 images every day. I think this week over 100,000 alone, so you're always going to find something new. Shutterstock is royalty-free. That means you buy an image, you can use it in a variety of places without paying additional royalties. They also have, if you click the footage tab up at the top, great video, high-quality video as well. You can buy image packs or download uh, 25 images a day with a standard subscription. That's what I've got. Uh, and they have the, a number of fabulous features, including the best image search I've ever seen. You're searching for corgis. Why don't you search for sad corgis? Aww. Because you can modify the adjectives with, I mean, the nouns with adjectives. So now we've got a little bit of a sad corgi. You, I mean, this is amazing. <laughs> you can also use their spectrum tool to pick corgis of a certain color 
so that they match with the design of your website or the uh, materials you're using. They've got an iPad app to die for, just gorgeous iPad app. Uh, it won a Webby Award. Also, and I like this feature, you don't have to buy images from Shutterstock or even give them a credit card to sign up for a Shutterstock account and use their sophisticated search tools and their shareable light boxes. You can save Corgi images to your heart's good. Oh my goodness, oh, I said Corgi. Yeah. To your oh my gosh. <laughs> oh no. We have so much fun with Shutterstock. You've probably seen us on uh, the social hour putting kitty cats in Sarah Lane's lap and things like that. Multilingual customer service in more than a dozen international countries. Full-time, I, I guess they have to be international countries. It really wouldn't be any good if they were just national countries. Full-time customer support throughout the week. Shutterstock, sign up for your free account today. You'll get a free images every week and the chance to use the Lightrooms if you decide to buy. If you see something you got to have for your blog, your publication, your website. Hey, we got a special deal for you. Of course we do. 25% off any package on new accounts. Just use our offer code before you buy 1113. That's Shutterstock.com. Use the offer code before you buy 1113 and you'll save 25% off on your brand new account. Ain't that a good deal? Shutterstock.com. So, Mr. Razorblade, Robert Indeed. Balliser, he's the host of This Week in Enterprise Tech, soon know how and soon to be a host of. Uh, I'm thinking programming 101. What do yeah, you think? Yeah, you know, it, we it's def basic. That's, that's what we want. We it's, want to tell people it's a basic. It says show. what it is. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. But we'll figure out the name. Uh, what do you got there? Well, you know, I, I take a look at a lot of laptops that do many things well, but uh, I thought maybe this time I take a, la a look at a laptop that does just one thing incredibly well. So this is a Razer Blade 14 inch. This is their 2013 model, and it's just look how for thin gaming. That is. It's super, super so thin. So it's an ultra book for gaming. For gaming. Crazy powerful gaming. Hmm. Stealth Fighter inspired composite fiber panels. Gucci Design Palm Rest, 30 megapixel web camera, ultra thin Blu ray optical drive, Porsche branded display, smart material coated keyboard keys, liquid metal casing, titanium hinges, gold coated USB multifunction ports. All part of this futuristic laptop from Razer. Wait, what is this, a designer espresso maker? Heck no. This is the 2013 Razer Blade 14 inch gaming laptop, and it doesn't have any of that junk. What it does have is a crazy amount of horsepower packed into an ultra-portable laptop designed for one thing and one thing alone. Gaming. The Blade is currently the world's thinnest and lightest gaming ultrabook, at 13.6 inches long, 9.3 inches deep, and 0.66 inches high, with 4.1 pounds of heft, all wrapped in a jet black, industrial design-inspired aluminum shell. Right above a large responsive multi-touch trackpad is a recessed keyboard that has plenty of travel and a pleasingly firm feedback accented by Razer's ghoulish green backlight. Straddling the keyboard are stereo speakers that provide plenty of power, even if they are a bit anemic on the low end. The display is a 14-inch HD plus 1600x900 16x9 matte finish panel with an LED backlight. It's topped by a 1.3 megapixel web camera and an array microphone. Razer omitted a touchscreen, which is disappointing since the Blade ships with Windows 8.1, but not unexpected since touch isn't a feature required by the type of games the Blade was made for. Ports are sparse. The left side houses the power port, two USB 3.0 ports, and a combo headphone microphone jack. The right side adds a Kensington lock port, an HDMI output, and a third USB 3.0 port. Noticeably absent is the Ethernet port, which is more than a little annoying considering that this is designed to be a gaming notebook. Instead, onboard networking is provided by a killer wireless N1202 chipset providing dual band 2.4 and 5 GHz 80211 ABGN along with Bluetooth 4.01. Our review unit came equipped with a 256 GB SSD, but the Blade can also come equipped with 128 or 512 GB of ultra fast storage. Of course, being a gaming notebook, the real specs are all about the power. And the processing punch comes from a quad-core Intel Haswell i7-4702HQ CPU, operating at 2.2GHz with a 3.2GHz turbo mode. The CPU is supported by 8GB of 1600MHz DDR3L memory. The Blade uses NVIDIA's Optimus Tech. That means that the laptop will use power-sipping integrated class graphics processing when browsing or media watching, but then switch to a pixel-crunching NVIDIA GeForce GTX 765M with 2GB of dedicated GDDR5 memory when gaming. 
When paired with the quad-core Haswell CPU, this means that the Blade's integrated 70-watt-hour lithium-ion polymer battery was able to survive our rundown test for 7 hours 2 minutes. Now that number will go down if the GPU and CPU are taxed, but that's still a phenomenal runtime on a quad-core gaming laptop that simultaneously gives you a fantastic boost in horsepower. And believe me, that power boost shows. In 3D Mark Vantage, the Razer Blade topped out at 16,955. That places it in the upper echelon of gaming notebooks, and it dominates gaming ultrabooks from Alienware, Main Gear, and even Razer's last generation of gaming notebooks, besting some of them by more than double. Test after test showed high frame rate gaming, even with the eye candy turned to 11. Battlefield, Call of Duty, Crisis, Bioshock, all smooth and crystal clear. The one downside to all this processing power in a redonkulously small package is that the blade tends to get hot, uncomfortably hot when pushed to the limit. But then again, after so much mind-boggling awesomeness, I probably couldn't feel my fingers anyways. While the lack of non-gaming accoutrements may sour the blade for some, it is undeniably the gaming ultrabook to have for the gamer on the go. The Razer Blade 14-inch gaming laptop is available now. You can find it online for under $2,000. So, um, you like it. I do. I get the feeling you like it. <laughs> I, I like I mean, it's crazy powerful. If you want a powerful notebook to do gaming, there really is nothing quite like this. I mean, it's light. It's powerful. Uh, did I mention it's powerful? Yeah. And also, it's incredibly powerful. I'm not, I just don't expect much power in a th machine that thin and light. I, it just seems like you're going to sacrifice something to get the size down. Right. And so We're so used to desktop uh, equivalents, right? Mm -hmm. And what really enabled this is Haswell. So the Haswell quad-core i7 yeah. has gotten power down there. So that the battery will last you six to seven hours. You know, of course, that goes down as you draw more and more power from the GPU and the CPU. But the trade-off is, although this is an incredible machine for gaming, it's not a great machine for anything else. Because no touch. No touch, no card slot, no ports beyond right. three USB it's, it's and for HDMI. Gamers. It is for gamers, and it's unapologetically for right. gamers. It, I'm kind of surprised that they didn't include Ethernet just because yeah you know but I gotta so point out the MacBook Air doesn't have any of those things either this right. and nobody says well boy that must just be for gamers well but for <laughs> gaming though uh, I can attest that playing through Ethernet works a lot better a lot it does. better it does well because it's all about the ping if, if right. you're a professional gamer and you want this That's on the go point. I'm sure you can get you a, don't a, go a converter though you can yeah. but it's you know to leave it out it's I know people are gonna nitpick on that and the graphics processor is is it Iris Pro it's, or? it's a GTX 765 oh, it has a video it, okay, it's good. a d dedicated graphics okay. part with two gigabytes of memory it is one wonderfically fast that's kind of what you expect from Razer exactly yeah. But hot. After about an hour of gaming on this thing, as I showed in my, my, my review, the keyboard where you touch gets over 100 degrees. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's pretty hot. Yeah. Just be careful. Don't yes. don't play games in your lap. Yeah. I, I would say <laughs> yeah. Don't play. Yeah. Please don't play. Please, in your kids. Lap. It, let's be safe here. But if you're a gamer, and if you're a gamer who wants your gaming machine on the go, so not just your desktop, not just your big 11 pound right. desktop replacement, this is an absolute buy. It might be your second computer. It, it might be your second computer. <laughs> $2,000 though, for That's anybody a else. That's a fair price. Mm, yeah. Well, you think it's too much. Yeah, for, for anybody else. MacBook Air is $12.99. Right, yeah. right. All right. Father Robert Balliser, Society of Jesuits, and our uh, regular uh, contributor on This Week in uh, Enterprise Tech, on Know How, you're taking over the channel here on no, on the show uh, before you buy all the time, and uh, soon to be on other Probably. shows. Is it a buy? Oh, this is a buy. Yeah. Oh, we didn't even say, did we? It's a buy. It's a buy. It's okay. Ooh, even buy. at that price, it's buy a buy. Buy it now. Go. Buy it. Go get it. Get it if you're game. Uh, so, uh, a lot of people waiting in line over the weekend to get something new from Apple. It's uh, a broken record. You hear it every year. The new iPad is here. This is it, the iPad Air. You know, I'm going to have to take it out. How, how locked in is it? <laughs> Turn it? Turn it to unlock it? Like that? Well, whichever way goes loose. Whichever way goes loose. Way, way. Any which way but loose. It's been locked in by Jammer B. Oh, you mean I have to unscrew it? No, no, no. Now it's Oh, I see. It's not. Okay, well, it's a really. <laughs> here it is. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really uh, lightweight iPad. For the first time, uh, it's about a pound. That's a, almost uh, 
it's 0.4 pounds less nothing. than the iPad 4. Uh, it's also narrower, and for the first time, I've been able to use the iPad in portrait mode and type with my thumbs, which is a, it's, it came to me very naturally and intuitively. I found myself in the first few minutes of using this starting to type uh, with my thumbs like this, which is pretty amazing. Um, it is uh, noticeably lighter, although still at a pound, uh, it's in there with the Kindle Fire HDX and other uh, tablets uh, of its ilk. Um, Screen, of course, as with all iPads, very good. And you will notice one of the things that Apple has been touting, this A7 chip. Apple says it's twice as fast. Benchmarks say about 80% as fast. It's definitely, noticeably faster. Even when you just do the, the Apple swoop in and out in iOS 7, you could tell it's much smoother, much more fluid, and much faster. Uh, so it's, it's a very uh, nice incremental upgrade to the existing iPads. Prices are the same. The Wi-Fi 16 gig version starts at 499, add 100 bucks to double the RAM all the way up to 128 gigs. $129 will put uh, LTE in there from all the carriers. Even T-Mobile now has an iPad, um, so you you know configure it the way you, you feel like. Um, I have to say, all in all, oh, space gray and silver it used to be black and white. Space gray and silver. That's the other. The other change. You can, by the way, if you get the cellular version with 128 gigs, you can hit almost $1,000 wow. for this iPad. The question, though, for a lot of people is, who should upgrade to the newest iPad? Certainly, if you don't have an iPad at all, this is the one uh, that you probably want. The only other choice isn't out yet, and that'll be out later this month, probably November 29th, Black Friday. That's the iPad mini with Retina. Exactly the same, exactly the same spec-wise, uh, just in a 7.9 inch screen. Um, that's really the choice if you're new to iPad. Get the new ones, you know? Uh, on the other hand, if you have an iPad, let's say third generation, or, or certainly if you have an iPad fourth generation, you might reasonably say, I don't think it's a big enough improvement for me to run out. Uh, iPad fourth generation, the last iPad, you know, you really have to be an iPad fanatic to get the latest and greatest. Mm -hmm. uh, unless you can find, you know, a relative to give the old one to and, and be happy about that. Uh, iPad third generation was fairly slow. It was the first with Retina display. Maybe you'd see a big improvement here. If you've got an iPad one or two, what are you waiting for? Um, pros and cons. Definitely thinner, shallower, although it's, they did a lot just to shrink a one and a half millimeters off the off the width. I don't notice that too much. I really do notice the it's narrower and uh, and it is uh, definitely lighter. You'll notice that. Also uh, stereo speakers on the bottom. It's lightning of course as all the new iPads will be from here on out until Apple invents another proprietary technology. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the pros, a good screen, good weight, good feel. It's light. You can finally uh, type with uh, two hands. Some people, not me, but some people with really big hands can hold this in one hand. Try that, Robert. Just see. Because yeah, I, I, I guess I have very small hands. I don't seem to be there able to go. hold it. Bam. Look at that. Easy for you. I could probably put it in oh, my pocket. Shannon, let's, let's see if you can hold that. it in one hand. Let's see. Not so much with this. No. No. See, no. Oh, I think so close. I, I can't, I'm not even close. <laughs> Do I have small hands? I must have small hands. I, I think, yeah. So you have. I can type with my thumbs, though. Yeah, and that's to me that's more important than whether that's you can hold it with important. one hand. If you want a one-handed yeah. iPad, you should get the Mini. Um, cons, it's just you know an incremental improvement. It's evolutionary, not revolutionary. I think the iPad is a significant product. Obviously, it's a significant product. I do a show called iPad Today. I love the iPad, but I'm not sure you should run right out. I can't give it a buy. Uh, if you have a very old iPad or no iPad at all and you want to get into the Apple ecosystem, well, then it's a buy. But for the rest of you, you should probably try it and see if it makes enough of a difference compared to your existing iPad to fork out $499. How is and the up. camera? The camera's a uh, slight improvement. Um, it uh, has optical image stabilization. I think that's the yeah, first iPad camera to have that. Uh, that means it'll work better in low light. Um, you know, the uh, the camera isn't, you know, it's, it's, what is it, 8 megapixels? It's not mm -hmm. yet as high megapixel as some of the other uh, options out there. But Apple does the best software for cameras, and some I don't know what the magic is that they uh, they weave, but it, it's a, it's like the iPhone, uh, even like the previous iPad. It's a very, very good camera. But mm -hmm. please, folks, don't use it as a camera. That's really dumb, okay? That's why I don't really want to recommend it as a camera. I'm curious, because I, I use FaceTime with my iPad. Oh, that's different now. That's gonna You're going to be using the front-facing camera. Yeah. 
And uh, I think there's a minor improvement in the front-facing camera as well. Not not a huge improvement. Yeah, if you okay. use it for face, this is, I mean, you, this is a perfect FaceTime uh, implementation. Sure. I, I was uh, in the Louvre not too long ago, and I saw a tour group with 20 people holding up iPads to take <laughs> pictures. Well, and it's that's what I'm scene. saying. It's I don't want to see scene. that. Uh, I understand, especially if you're doing uh, movies. You know, you know, the i7, the new uh, iOS 7, has some really nice camera features. And I think if you're doing movies, the idea that you have a giant viewfinder like this really has some uh, value to it. But it's a very annoying. If you're going to take pictures, Use the mini or mm -hmm. something. I mean, mm -hmm. this don't hold that up in the Louvre. Nobody can see around you. And yeah, if you're at a wedding or a concert, don't. Oh. So when you ask me, yes, it's a great camera. It's a very good camera, but I hate to recommend using this for the camera. Uh, the FaceTime camera, there it is, 1.2 megapixels, 720p. Okay. I think that's the same as the previous iPad. Actually. Yeah. Uh, five megapixel camera. Thank you for the correction. Five megapixel camera, not eight. Uh, it's the iPhone that has eight, but. If they do a lot with those 5 megapixels. Yeah. Try on the uh, iPad Air. I do like the name. Good name. Yep. Branding. Lighter. Branding. It doesn't exactly float away, but it's lighter. Well, I think we're done. That's uh, a lot of products. Wow, that yeah. was a lot of products. Mm -hmm. I want to thank me and thank me some more for doing my <laughs> fabulous reviews. And I guess you guys did it. Okay, two of them. <laughs> Father Robert Balliser, uh, Shannon Morse, thank you. Uh, thanks to Sarah Lane for her review of the... Uh, uh, mobile home for the uh, iPhone. Anybody else? Did I miss somebody? Thank you, Internets, for watching. Thank you, Internets. I We couldn't do this show without you. We do it uh, on Tuesdays around about 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, that would be about midnight UTC. Please, if you want to watch live, we love it. We see the chat room. Yes. Uh, but if you can't, we make on-demand audio and video available at twit.tv slash BYB. You can also subscribe everywhere. In fact, if you subscribe, you know, that way you get it every week. It's automatic. And if you want to share individual reviews, we've got all the reviews one by one, as well as the full show on our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash before you buy, right? Yes. Am I right? And we also have a survey, I believe, a Twitter mm -hmm. survey. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't want to forget that. We are asking uh, those of you who watch, we'd like to know more about you. And we're not going to share this with advertisers uh, individually. We'll share it as a en masse. You know, our audience is... You know, half of you is uh, are above 35 or whatever that is. We're trying to get that information and make it easier for us to go to advertisers and say, here's who's watching these shows. So if you can, if you can take the time, visit our website, twit.tv, and fill out the survey. You can go directly there, twit.tv slash survey. Uh, and uh, I know it takes a, a few minutes to do, I don't know, what is it, about 8,000 like questions? Yeah, not, it's not really that much. <laughs> no, You'll breeze through it. Take, take 10 minutes, something like that. And um, you know what? After you finish with it, treat yourself to an ice cream. You don't have to, if you do that, you don't have to send me five bucks. There we go. There we go. It, so it's, it's, it helps it's us a lot with the uh, sales. Twit.tv slash survey. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We would like to see you again next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the show. And remember, <laughs> you got to watch before you buy. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Oh, I like that.